Welcome back, my friends. It's your friend, Jerry Tolliver, CEO of Fly Credit, where we help you have better credit, better opportunities, and a better lifestyle. Now, welcome to day two of our 12 days of holiday deals. Today, we're going to be talking more credit goodness so you can get more out of your credit so that you can get those lower rates, those higher scores, and so that you can just really upgrade your lifestyle. I mean, geez, having good credit is everything. Uh, and so I want to give you all 10 things that you really need to know about your credit today so that you can get the most out of it. Now, a lot of people yesterday, we asked the question, would you rather have a 850 credit score or would you rather have 100K? I also gave you all a special little gift which I will be giving you all today as well. There is a special little gift in my box, a surprise gift, because I don't know what the gift is going to be uh, just as much as you don't. <laughs> so it's going to be a surprise for both of us. Yesterday we talked about, would you rather have 850 credit scores or 100K? Now, some people said, I would rather have 850. Some people said, I'd rather have 100K. Some people said, I want to have both, Jerry. The sky's the limit. I got you. Now, either way, there is no right or wrong answer, really. I just want to see where you at with that. Now, me, I would definitely take both. <laughs> in the Since I've been in cre the credit world for so many years, about almost seven years now, I've learned so much about credit um, that makes me realize that it's very important to have both cash and to have credit. And if you don't have both, then it's very important for us to work on that. Now, if you don't have good credit and if you don't have 100K in the bank, it's all good. But what I want you to know is that having good credit is pretty easy, actually. Um, getting good credit is easier than it is to get 100K, right? We talked about that yesterday. Uh, but you don't necessarily need a 50 credit score. You don't necessarily need 100K in the bank. But if you do want that, there are some steps that you need to take. And there's some things that you need to know about credit. Now, we talked about some benefits. We talked about, you know, some things that you, you know, may not want to experience when it comes to your credit and when it comes to spending with cash and, and, and debit. Um, but one thing that I want you all to know today is that credit is going to change your life once you uncover everything that's waiting for you. Now, one big benefit to having a credit, uh, well, one benefit of having credit, period, is that having good credit or just having credit or building credit is a part of building trust with the bank. Now, I say this all the time that banks want to give you money. I don't care what anybody tells you. Banks want to give you money. They do. They want to give it to you because that's the only way that banks get paid. The banks are in the business of lending money, of making money, lending money. That's how they get paid. And so they want to give you money. It doesn't matter your skin color. It doesn't matter your age. Well, your age does matter, you know, because if you don't have established credit and, you know, you're young, uh, then there are still some opportunities that won't be on, on the table for you. Uh, but there's there's some things that sometimes people think stands in the way of getting approved, but there really isn't anything that's standing in the way of you getting approved. The only thing that stands in your way of getting approved is just not having a high enough credit score or not having an established credit profile. An established credit profile, it's like, it's like your report card. It's like your financial report card. And your credit report shows how well you manage your credit. It shows how well you manage other people's money. And the banks take that as a symbol of trust. And so if you're paying everything on time, right? If you're not maxing out your credit cards, if you're you know, doing everything the right way related to your credit, then the banks, they don't have a reason to reject you. They don't have a reason to deny you. And if they do deny you, there's some steps that you could take to turn that all around. Now, the next thing that you need to know is that you really should never use your credit to pay for things that you can't afford. Um, I fell into this trap actually when I first started building credit. I landed myself into $32,000 of credit card debt actually, <laughs> trying to figure out how to use credit. Um, and it was really hard getting out of that credit card debt um, because those interest payments, whew, those minimum payments, whew, they were eating my pockets alive, y'all. But that was really only because I was paying for things that I shouldn't have been paying for on credit anyway. Now, now, now that I manage credit, I don't spend money on credit cards uh, unless I have the cash in the bank to pay it back right away, unless it's like a super emergency. So if it's a super emergency and I don't have the money in the bank right now, I'll just swipe my credit cards because it's an emergency. But if it's outside of an emergency, if it's just like some shoes, some groceries, um, you know, things that you don't 
necessarily need per se to put on your credit, um, then don't put it on your credit. But I do put everything on my credit now because I can pay it right back off right away. So rule of thumb, please never pay for anything that you cannot afford uh, on your credit cards because racking up credit card debt happens extremely fast. And once you're in it, it's extremely hard um, to get out of it. (laughs) Uh, Next tip. I actually mentioned this yesterday that good credit just doesn't happen overnight. Now, I have realized that we live in a microwave society. We live in YouTube land, right? Where you can find everything and all this information and all this stuff everywhere. You know, you don't really know what's true and what's not true. Um, But what I do know is that when you've got good credit or when you're really in the process of building a credit, it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And many times people do come to us and they say, well, can you get this off my credit in three months? Can you get this off my credit in 30 days? We'll specifically tell them no. We'll tell them no, because we don't know. We don't know. When you're repairing your credit, first of all, you have to repair your credit the right way. There's a right way and a wrong way to repair your credit. And I've noticed that a lot of people, especially online, be please be careful. They're repairing credit the wrong way. We've been in this industry for years. We've helped thousands of people across the U.S. We've helped people raise their scores. We've helped people repair their credit. We've helped people, we've helped guide people to having better credit overall in their life, in their lifetime, in their life, period. So if you're trying to build good credit, you need to have patience. Give yourself patience. Give yourself enough time to make it happen. If it's six months, if it's a year, if it's two years, just make sure that you're consistently working towards it. Because when you consistently work towards anything, you have no choice but to get results, okay? You have no choice but to get results. Fourth thing is not all credit cards are created equal. They're not created equal, y'all. I mean, you've got credit cards that give you cash back. You've got credit cards that give you points. You've got credit cards that give you rewards. You've got credit cards that are balance transfer cards. You have credit cards that have so many different perks and and security features that you have to really do your due diligence. Now, I don't get credit cards anymore that don't have any perks or rewards. I've gotten to a point now with my money team. I've grown my money team or my money portfolio uh, to a point where if I'm applying for a credit card, it has to have a specific benefit for me. So it has to have, you know, bonus points or it has to have bonus rewards or it has to have, you know, something extra for me to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and apply for that credit card. But you have to be very strategic about it. You have to be very, very strategic about applying for credit cards because like I said, not all credit cards are created equal. So when you're in the process of rebuilding your credit, if you're, you know, after you've repaired it, and you're like, okay, now it's time to build my credit, then just understand that building credit is going to require you to get credit. It's going to uh, require you to apply for credit, to use credit, to get loans, credit cards. These things are required to establish credit, okay? But just make sure that you get credit cards that you're going to keep around for a while. Because the last thing that you want to do really is you don't really want to get credit cards you're not really going to use because if you don't use them, then they may get closed. <laughs> and if they get closed, then that could affect your payment history and your overall credit age of your credit. Uh, and these things play a big factor in your credit score. So make sure that every credit card or every loan or anything that you apply for, just make sure you do your, dil- your due diligence. Make sure that you know what the credit limit is going to be. Make sure you know uh, what the interest rate is going to be. Be in the know. Y'all, I am always shocked by people that... um that apply for things, right? Even vehicles, they apply for cars. And these cars have astronomical interest rates. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I was that person. My first vehicle was a 2004 uh, Pontiac Grand Prix, (laughs) okay? I financed this vehicle. It was like $12,500. I paid on that car for four years at $410 a month, like 410 or 408, somewhere around there. But at the end of the, when the, when it all boiled down to it, I ended up spending like two times or three times of the amount of the vehicle because my interest rate was like 22%. It was 22%. And we go broke paying car notes all the time, but that's because we don't pay attention to the interest. So we have to do our due diligence when we're applying for loans, when we're applying for credit cards, because they are not always created equal. 
Next thing, interest rates are everything. They really are. Interest rates are everything. So don't blindly apply for things because your interest rate could take you out. (laughs) Your interest rate can take you out. And if you don't know how to calculate interest, then that's something that you need to know. You need to learn how to calculate your interest. You need to learn how to do research before you go apply for anything. Okay. There are a lot of tools online that can help you estimate what your payment will be on a car or what your payment will be on a loan or what your payment will be on a a mortgage. There are plenty of tools that will help you with this, but the most important part of it all is the interest rate because the interest rate is going to determine one, how much money you spend overall over the life of the loan. Uh, and two, it depends on how much money you're going to be able to save. So if you have a really high interest rate and you end up spending $12,000, $15,000 in interest payments, could you imagine what you could do with $12,000, $15,000? Y'all, I talked about this yesterday. The average person spends over $50,000 in interest payments. For some people, that's a yearly salary. And people are paying this in interest payments. So we have to realize that interest payments are the most important part when it comes to borrowing money. So make sure that you guys pay very, very close attention to your interest rates. Another thing you should know is APR and interest rates are not the same thing. Your APR takes into consideration, uh, you know, deposit, not deposit. Oh yeah. Actually deposit deposits, fees, all your fees put together, basically, um, that counts into the overall loan, but your interest rate is the amount of interest that you're going to be paying over the life of the loan. So just know the difference, especially when you go shopping for vehicles, um, because sometimes they'll put APR, but they won't tell you what the interest rate is. The APR and interest are two completely different things. But if you want to make sure that you're prepared, right? If you want to make sure that you're prepared before you go anywhere, just make sure that you check your credit. That's my next tip. Check your credit because you should be checking your credit a minimum of once a year a minimum of once a year. Um, I check my credit every month because I'm just obsessed with it. Um, and I have been a victim of identity theft. So I, <laughs> I do watch my, my credit pretty closely because I have had people open up uh, cell phone bills. They've tried to open up credit card bills in my name. Uh, and so I've watched my, my credit very, very closely. But you all should too. You should be you know uh, reviewing your credit at least monthly, at least quarterly, at least once a year. Okay. If you're not checking your credit consistently, then you don't know what may be happening with it. And like I said, having good credit is everything. So make sure that you start working on that by starting out with, um, checking your credit and you can do it for free, by the way, you can do it for free. You can do it with credit karma. They let you check your uh, Equifax and your transgender report. And you can go to experian.com to get a free Experian report and score. Um, and if you want your, you know, all three reports for free, you can also get them at, uh, annual So annual will give you your credit reports from all three credit bureaus for free once a year. So make sure that you pull that credit y'all to get in the know, because that's really the first step in in improving your credit is knowing what's on it. So if you don't know what's on it, you're never going to be able to fix it. Uh, eighth step is don't close your credit cards. I actually did this once. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I had <laughs> closed one of my oldest credit cards. My first credit card was a Capital One Quicksilver that I had gotten in college. Um, and I had that card for like seven years and I closed it out thinking that I was getting rid of debt. Um, but I didn't, I wasn't carrying a balance on the card. So I wasn't carrying debt anyway, (laughs) but I closed the card y'all. And I had lost like 70 points from closing the card. Now, granted, I was able to, um, reopen the card because it was in good standing. Um, so they was able to reopen the card for me at the time. Um, but if I wouldn't, if I, (laughs) if I would have kept it closed, then I would have had to have to rebuild that credit. So never close your credit cards, especially your old credit cards, because your old credit cards are what help you build credit. So keep your credit cards open as long as you possibly can use them, pay them off. That is the first step, um, to be able to, you know, build that good credit, um, for the long term. The ninth thing that you need to know is all credit is repairable. Y'all it's all repairable. So if you're like, Oh, I fell bankruptcy. I've got a repo. I've got defaulted student loans. I've got bankruptcy. It's cool. All 
credit is repayable. One of my students the other day, Dr. Virginia, she was actually talking about how she had uh, filed bankruptcy. She filed bankruptcy. She had went through a divorce. And, you know, at a point she was feeling a little discouraged about her credit. Uh, and then she ran across our Fly Credit University. She got in tune and she was able to get her high. Uh, she was able to raise her credit scores to 700. She's been able to get approved for Chase, uh, Chase cards, Chase Freedom cards. She's been able to get approved for loans. And she's just ecstatic. It's, it's, it's exciting, right? It's really exciting to be able to see the fruits of your labor come true. It's so exciting to be able to get approved. It's exciting to see the credit limits go up. It's exciting to see the interest rates go down. <laughs> it's exciting. And so if you're feeling like, oh my God, my credit isn't good. I've been working on it for so long. I don't know where to, to start. Well, one thing that you could do is you can hit us up at Fly Credit. You can go to our website, sign up for our credit repair program. Or you can sign up for our Fly Credit University. Our Fly Credit University teaches you how to repair your credit, how to rebuild it, how to get the most out of it, how to use it to make more money, how to use it to save more money, pay off debt. It's so much valuable information in there. It's ridiculous. And it's all about getting the most out of your credit. So if you're feeling a little down about your credit, it's not where you want to be, no worries. All credit is repairable. Bad credit expires after a certain period of time, right? So if you've got a bankruptcy or a collection on your credit, guess what? It's going to expire after seven years anyway. So, you know, don't feel discouraged because it is easy to feel discouraged when your credit isn't good, when you're having a hard time getting approved for things that you absolutely need. But as long as you work towards it, you'll be able to achieve your goals. And then the last thing that I want to give you guys is I want you all to know that there are different scoring models. You've got Vantage, you've got FICO, all these different FICO eights and sixes, and you have all these different uh, credit scoring systems. And so when you're shopping for something, just know that if they're going to pull your credit, they're more than likely going to pull your FICO credit score, your FICO credit score. Now, um, the credit scoring models are continuously evolving. Okay. That's, this is the reason why there's so many different models, because it's kind of like when you get an update on your phone, right? When you get an update on your phone, it's technically like a new model or a new model of the software. Or when you upgrade your phone, it's a new model. And that's the same exact thing with credit scores. You've got different versions of FICO. You have different versions of Vantage. And so if you've had, if you have all these different versions of credit score, you, it's really important to know which ones to pay the closest attention to. And if you're going to go get a house or auto loan, then it's important to take, take a look at your FICO score. And if you want to look at your FICO score, go to myfico.com, myfico.com, so that you can pull your FICO credit scores and take a look at them. Take a peek, check them out, see what's going on, okay? It is going to cost you. <laughs> it's going to cost you to pull your FICO credit scores. But like I said, it's always best to just be in the know before you apply for anything. So even if you're even if you're um, monitoring your credit on Credit Karma or Experian for free, that's cool because you can at least be able to see what's on your credit report. But if you want your true score, the one that lenders are going to go by, you got to go to my FICO, y'all. You got to go to my FICO, sign up. It's not free, um, but it is going to give you your true score that lenders are going to look at um, when they're considering getting you approved. But these are all extremely important things when you're considering personal and business credit because interest rates are important, personal and business credit, right? All credit is not uh, the same for personal and business credit. It's different. And so no matter what type of credit you're trying to build, if you're trying to repair your personal credit, if you're trying to build business credit, all these things do apply. All these things do apply. <laughs> and so it's very important for you to follow these steps, these 10 rules, right? These philosophies about your credit so that you know and you have a plan that you can really take that step of action and you can follow it and start having success. So those are 10 things you need to know about your credit. Let's get some gifts away, y'all. I like giving gifts. So I know y'all got some good information today and you're probably thinking that you're going to do something a little different. Some things that you may not have ever really considered, right? You never really considered before. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you knew all the possibilities that are available to you as a person, as a consumer, as a business owner, when you're talking about your credit, because people are so misinformed. So let me know in the comments below. Which one of these 10 rules resonated the most with you? Drop it in the chat for me. Drop it in the chat. Which one of these 10 rules are you going to consider more while you're working on your credit? All right, it's gift time, y'all. Yes. All right.
right, here we go. Yes. Okay, y'all. So we've got a new gift for y'all today. Y'all ready? All right. So we've talked about all these different things that you need to know about your credit thing that you need to know to get the most out of it. So what I want to do today is your gift, your holiday deal is going to be a two for one deal on our flawless credit guy and our business credit secrets ebook. All right. Now our flawless credit guy is going to give you a guideline on how to start improving your personal credit right away. So if you've been lost, if you've been a little, if you're struggling a little bit, if you don't really know where to start, the Flawless Credit Guide is going to get you on your way to building flawless personal credit scores. The same exact methodology that I personally use to increase my personal credit score from 545 to 765 in eight months. And then Business Credit Secrets is our business credit guide that's going to help you of learning how to build business credit the right way the first time. So if you don't know where to start with your business credit, if you're looking for ways to start building business credit the fast way, the right way, the more effective way, uh, then the Business Credit Secrets ebook is going to help you with that. Now, usually these books will go for about 30 bucks, but you're going to be able to get both of these ebooks for $15 today. That's it. $15 for both of our eBooks. They are one of our top resources that people purchase to start their journey to good personal and business credit. So that's something that you're looking to do, y'all. You need to go ahead, click the link below if you're watching this on our website. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, I'm going to pop those links in the description and a link in my bio so you can take advantage of this eBook offer, our holiday deal offer, because this is going to help you take it one step closer to start getting your credit and your personal credit and your business credit right. So those are the 10 tips that I have for you guys today for credit. If you all got some good stuff, feel free to share this video. If you got some questions about your credit, you're like, Jerry, we need some help. No problem. Go over to flycredit.com, schedule a free consultation with us. I'll be more than happy to help you on your credit journey. But in the meantime, I want y'all to think about those 10 tips today. And we're going to be back tomorrow with more tips, more gifts, uh, and some more knowledge. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Happy holidays, and I will see y'all next time. Bye, y'all.